Special Modeling, Topic 7, Section 2. We're going to create an Excel static portfolio, which I mean by static is non-stochastic. We're going to create a static portfolio model with multiple periods, changing asset allocations over your lifetime, using the 120 minus your age and stock asset allocation rule of thumb with contributions. So we'll go to our spreadsheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I've already set up much of this model for us, and we're going to walk through that and complete it. So here are my basic assumptions. You're 25 years old today. You've saved $1 for retirement. You want to retire, I'm sorry, you want to retire at the age of 65, and you'll last for 30 years in, in retirement, a good long life to age 95. Inflation rate, 2.5%, and your salary growth is also going to be 2.5%, and you're going to save 10% of your money. Your income, again, is $55,000. So what I have first here is your income starts out at $55,000 and grows at 2.5% per year. So at the age of 65, you're making $147,000 per year. Notice I start hiding some rows to just show increments of 35, 40, 45, 50, and so on. And you can see some rows are just hidden. If you want to unhide them, you just select some rows, right click, and unhide. But I'll leave them hidden to make it easier to look at. So these are my, this is my salary growth. I'm going to assume I save 10% per year of my pre-tax salary. So these are the contributions my year-end contributions to my retirement account. I'm going to use the 120 minus your age in stocks. So I take the number 120 minus your age of 25. That's 95. Divided by 100 is 95%. And then I'll just put the balance split evenly between bond and cash. So the extra 5%, half of that will go into bonds, half will go into stock. So what you see is your portfolio starts off with 95% stock. And by the time you're 65, it's down to 55% stock. And what happens is the weights in bonds and cash go up. So it's a, a common rule you see recom uh, recommended by financial planners, 120 minus your age in stock. And then I made some capital market assumptions. I expect I have the expected return of stocks, 7.5, bonds, 3.5, cash two and a half, cash meaning money market funds. The standard deviations of stock, about the 90 year average, bonds and cash standard deviations. These are the correlations I'm gonna use between stocks, bonds, and cash. And then I constructed a covariance matrix, taking those vols times a transpose of vols times a cor correlation matrix. And we did this in earlier topics. So, I have this covariance matrix, these weights. I'm now going to calculate the expected return of my portfolio each year. The expected return is pretty easy. It's just going to be the weights times the means. Now, since this, these are in rows, the weights and the expected returns or mean returns are in columns, I can't use a sum product unless I transpose it, but it'd just be easier to use matrix algebra and mult the row of weights times the column of returns. And you can always multiply a row vector times a column vector of the same dimension. Control shift enter. And that is my expected portfolio return every year. And you notice it goes down over time as the weights go to the lower expected return assets. Now I didn't have you type in this formula. Here's my formula for calculating per, uh, standard deviation of portfolio. Now, normally in earlier topics, I said it's the M mult, M mult transpose WSW to the one half power. In other words, it is the transpose of the weights, assuming weights are in a column, it's the row vector of weights times the covariance matrix times the column vector of weights. But have, notice here, my weights are not in a row. I'm sorry, not in a column, they're in a row. So I don't have to transpose the weights Right? For the matrix algebra to work, I just need to have the row vector of weights times the covariance matrix times the column vector of weights. In the earlier problems, 
the weights were always in a column, so I had to transpose the first number, the first W, or the first weights. These are in rows, so I just had to transpose the second one to have a row times a square matrix times a column. Therefore, it's M mult, M mult, W, S, transpose W to the 1 half power, and what you see is the portfolio gets safer over time, down to 9.5% by the time you're 65 when you retire. So I now have the portfolio mean and the portfolio vol. I'll then get the portfolio expected return. So what I have here is my beginning I12, which is my beginning balance of $1 times 1 plus the expected return, 728, plus a year-end contribution of $5,500. Now, if this were a year-beginning contribution, I would have to add it to the prior balance, then multiply times 1 plus the expected return. But since this is a year-end contribution, I'm going to add it after I get the interest. I can then copy that down. And what you see is you wind up with $1.319 million at age 65. So given my savings rate, that rule of thumb of 10%, my rule of thumb of 120 minus my age in stocks and the rest in bonds and cash, and using some reasonable assumptions about capital markets of stocks, bonds, and cash, their expected returns, volatilities, and correlations, I should wind up with $1.319 million at retirement. Notice uh, I, I pull that last salary right here, and I pull my, I mean, sorry, so I should say my retirement year salary and my retirement year portfolio, this number and this number, using a VLOOKUP formula. Now notice how VLOOKUPs work. VLOOKUP is an Excel function where you give it a value to look for. And I'm going to look for the number 65. It's in B9. I'm going to look for it in this array. Now this array is actually this entire range down here from A12 all the way down to this area here. So look for the number 65 in the far left column. So it's going to find this number right here in this array and return the value in the second column, which is the $47,000. I'm going to make sure that's an exact match by typing the word false there. So it's looking for exactly 65. Hit OK. And it gives me the value in the second column of this array that meets 65. And then the next look up, it says give me the value in the ninth column, which is the ninth column when it finds 65 is the $1.319 million. What this allows me to do is the VLOOKUP, if I wanted to change my retirement age to 64, it'll automatically look up how much money I have at age 64. Or if I want to change it to 70, notice it's now pulling this number and this number. So I'm going to hit undo and keep 65 as my retirement. Now I've done three more calculations. The first one is retirement annuity. So I'm going to make a huge assumption. I'm going to retire with $1.319 million. And then I'm going to figure out if I can get a guaranteed retirement annuity that gives me a 3.5% return and I have $1.319 million to hand over as, an as, my, as my deposit or my investment. And I want that to last me 30 years to age 95 years old. How much can I safely withdraw or can I withdraw per year and have nothing left over? Future value of zero. And that number turns out to be 71722 So. I'm 25 years old, 30 years from today I'm going to retire, and 30 years from today I expect to have $1.39 million, and at age 65 to 95 I'll start withdrawing $71,722 per year. Now that may sound like a lot of money, especially since I'm only making $55,000, but remember with inflation that's just not as much money as you think. The real value, the, per the today's purchasing power 
of that $71,000, I take the $71,000 over one plus the inflation rate. And then what I do is I take B9, which is my year of retirement, minus B6, my current age. That difference is 30 years. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discount $71,000 at 2.5% inflation for 30 years. That's like retiring on 26,712 today. A couple other metrics we're gonna calculate are wealth to income and income replacement. Let's just go ahead a little bit. The wealth to income ratio is, is simply your monetary wealth at retirement, that's your portfolio, divided by your annual income at retirement. Now the importance is that it's a nice way to summarize how much you have saved relative to your income. And research suggests that at retirement, you should have between say five and 15 times your income saved. So if you are making $100,000 at retirement and you want a 10 to one wealth to income ratio, you should have $1 million in retirement or $1.5 million if you think that number should be 15 times. And that function is an increasing function of of income. In other words, higher income people should have uh, a higher amount of savings uh, for some reasons we'll talk about in a minute. The other ratio we're going to calculate is income replacement. That is, take that amount we're going to withdraw from our portfolio annually in retirement and compare that to our salary. So it's how much of our salary we're replacing with our annuity, our investment annuity. Research suggests that number should be between 30 and 70%. Now you would think, why isn't it 100%? If I want to consume just as much in retirement as I was while I was working, why don't I, I need 100% of my uh, of salary replaced with my annuity? Well, one thing, you've been saving all your life. If you've been saving 10%, you've actually been living on only 90% of your income. Therefore, you would think at a minimum, it should be 100% minus your savings rate. However, in retirement, you're also gonna have less taxes, especially pay payroll taxes, Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare. So you're not gonna pay that. And you're saving, you know, your tax rates just may be lower also with some lower levels of income and some tax advantage savings accounts. And lastly, Social Security may replace 20 to 50% 20 to of your income. Now for uh, lower income people, that's gonna be closer to the higher number. And for the rich, Social Security is gonna replace uh, much less. That, for that reason, that's why we only need to replace 30 to 70% of our income to have the same consumption because we've been consuming less than 100% all our life we're paying less in taxes and we're getting some Social Security. So for that reason, we don't need to have as much. So I keep track of these. This portfolio that we've set up, it's gonna give us 8.9 years, or 8.9 wealth to income ratio. Oh, I just, uh, just thought of something here. Uh, this portfolio is gonna give us 40 years it's starting 40 years from today, since I'm 25 years old and the portfolio, uh, so I'm retiring at 65, that'll be 40 years from today. So I, I misspoke there, that's 40 years from today. Okay, so my wealth to income ratio targeted is 8.9 and I'm gonna replace 49% of my income. I'm gonna get an annuity of $71,000 divided by my last year's income of $147,000. So this is my static deterministic. In other words, no randomness in this model. It only assumes that one thing's gonna happen. If I do that, I'm gonna retire $1.3 million. I'm gonna generate a 30 year annuity of $71,000, which is in real dollars is 26,712. That's gonna give me a wealth to income ratio of about nine and replace 49% of my salary, pre-tax, pre-saving salary in retirement. So in this topic, we created an Excel static portfolio with multiple periods, changing asset allocations, using the 120 minus your agent stock rule, and added contributions. Next couple topics, we're gonna to add uh, to that model and make it stochastic.